So after a lot of work, we came to these finalizations of these components for our poster. It's a pretty basic poster layout. We have a border. We have a background. We have text that's done as a vector and then brought in as a smart object and then colored using layer styles within Photoshop. And we have a spot illustration that also has line art that is a vector smart object. So all of these things are independently arranged and can be refined. But once you've kind of put everything together, sometimes I even composited in this this, these kind of rough textures behind. And everything has like so much thrown at it. Everything has so much texture, so much color that it can get a little overwhelming. And sometimes I find that when I, I work like this, the image starts to get overworked and it becomes a little fussy. And I long for the actual art that you can hold in your hand. You know, what is the product that this is going to produce? So finishing techniques, this is what I call finish. You know, I put it in quotes. How do you get to a finish on your piece? You want every aspect of it to be as rewarding as every other. So talk about Aaron's presentation in the cast of Clash of Clans skins. They spend as much time like texturing the top of the toe as they do the glint in the eye, right? everything wants to feel finished because they want you to feel like it's worth the money to explore that artwork. And same thing when you're creating digital work, especially when you want it finished off. So I have a bunch of different finishing techniques I like, but one that relates to physical printing is called uh, halftone color separation. And so I have a whole presentation on it because I want you to know that even when you finish something off in Photoshop fully, that's not the end of the road for your digital artwork. And if you go to assignments, and you go to assignment six, you'll see some of the resources, not just the mentorship presentation on type design and layout, but also I have what's called an exhaustive explanation of CMYK color separation. So this is what halftone color separation looks like. And if you take a magnifying glass to any poster you have, any textbook you have, any color photograph that's printed, right, for like a concert poster, for an album cover, it's going to be broken up into these mechanical dots in four inks on white paper. And if it's on clay-coated paper, it's going to be brighter. And that's generally what we have. And those four inks are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If you layered those up together and you didn't use dots, this would be what the inks look like just layered as solids, right? And all together with the black layering on top of the cyan, yellow, magenta. And this is actually just layering the cyan, cyan yellow, and magenta together. You can see those colors in the corner here on white. You get what looks like a black, but it's really like a muddy brown. So that's why you need the extra addition of a black ink to get crisp contrast and clean blacks, especially for something like digital coloring. Now, there are a lot of artists like me who, even though this is an older printing process, this was started in the, in the 30s as a photographic printing process using lithography plates. But there are artists that like this kind of retro look on new work in a variety of ways. And we'll even create animations with them, animations that are made from individual printouts that are mechanically printed. So it's creating, thing di creating things digitally, outputting them physically, then rescanning them in to post them and animate them digitally. It's all bringing that, that real world texture of actual printing into the process. So that's what these animations are. And you get that, that beautiful aesthetic of not just halftone dots, but of the actual paper and the overlap of the inks and how things are absorbed and the kind of textures of that. 
And in this artist's case, this is all physical. It's not a texture overlay that's put over the top. Here's another artist that likes to use color separation and physical printing, but does it with solid shapes, with full bleed printing, and creates animations on that. So this is the process. Does digital paintings, right? You can see how they can use Illustrator for this, but then prints them out and actually prints them out as single color separations. You can see the whole row here um, on cardboard. Precisely because cardboard, like newsprint, doesn't absorb the ink as well. And so you get little like textural skitters and misrepresentations. And you'll get little, little artifacts that come through. So all of these artists work as professional digital artists, but they include that process from physical printing, which I find really fascinating. And it limits their colors. And you can't say that this work doesn't feel fully considered and finished, right? Because every aspect of it, you know, so even all this blank space, it's got those great textures kind of skittering through it because of the process that's used. So this versus like a really clean vector animation, this just has a lot, a lot more integrity and finish to it for my taste. So, how can you play with this? Well, this is what happens whenever you send your work, your millions of colors in a digital RGB file, when you send it to a professional printer. So this is when your work gets used for an album cover, for a poster, you know, or gets published for a book cover. It's not going to be printed on a fine, fine art printer with nine different ink cartridges that have a random diffuse DPI of 2,630 dots per inch. Instead, it has to go through a large printing press, just like books, posters, anything mass produced. And that's with lithography plates that are made of aluminum that are shot with, with photo plates. And in order to get those tones that look like gradations in your color. So for instance, for black, or this is a sepia ink on yellow paper. But in order to get those gray tones, you, you're using the same black ink you're using for everything else. It just has to be separated into these dots, right? So it's stippling, but in a mechanical way. These are called Bin Day dots, named after the printer Benjamin Day. It's similar to the, the post-impressionist art technique made famous by Georges Seurat called pointillism, where you're using pure dots of color to optically mix instead of actually blending color. And the dots are either closely spaced or widely spaced. Here you can see they're widely spaced. Here you can see they're closely spaced. Or sometimes they're reversed. So it's white dots on black versus black dots on white in order to get all the different tones. Digitally, your artwork can be separated into halftone screens for professional printing. If any of you want to do t-shirt designs that are more than one color, you have to output them this way because t-shirts are printed with silk screens. right? So there's two ways you can separate your colors. You can separate them in a halftone pattern, which is the bin day dot method. This is called a, a half drop pattern. It's like bricks in a wall where blacks are always done at 45 degrees. So you can see kind of the straight lines of black dots are at a 45 degree angle. What that gives you is a half drop. So from each line, each register of dots, they move over by one half step, like bricks in a wall. So that's half toning, which I like. It's also what kind of pop artists liked in the 60s because they were mimicking the printing techniques of comic books from the 50s, which were printed on newsprint at 150 dots per inch, dots that you could see with your naked eye, right? And when we talked about digital coloring, we saw about the limited colors that they were able to get. So it does limit your color potential. Another way of doing it is how our fine art printers work. It's called the diffusion print or an indexed dither. Sometimes it's called a sand diffusion, but it's made to look random. And yet it's not random so that it can layer up. And this image, which gives you pretty full range of color, is just CMYK done with an index dither. And up close, it might look something like this. Right? Versus this image, which is done with the halftone separation. 
And these are the four layers of ink layered up to give you this full image. You can see it in a close up with the eye. So the thing I need you to know, whether you're going to play with this finishing technique or not, I need you to know these halftone screen angles. So black will always be at 45 degrees, but for the other colors to work with the black so they don't all just become a brown muddy mess when they're overlapped, they have to be offset from each other. That's why it's called four color offset printing. But you can also use this technique just as a finishing technique to break up your color so here we're seeing, this is kind of how Lichtenstein did paintings in the 60s, but this is done digitally. Here you see just red dots being used as a half tone at 45 degrees to optically mix to a skin tone. Here you see it used with red dots again and some of those kind of textures from physical printing to give a finished look for this digital illustration, keeping the Wonder Woman theme going from digital coloring. And then maybe one of my favorite examples of halftone being used really effectively as a finishing technique was in the movie Into the Spider-Verse. And there's a great link uh, that should work, <laughs> but you can see they were really uh, generous with the online design community kind of sharing how they did that, integrating a lot of that old comic book kind of halftone printing into their full 3D digital animation. Here you see some other examples of it being used, both old and new. It was big in printing, like from Pushpin Studios in the 60s, which is something I really like. And then just to drive it home, this is straight from a, a color printing guide, which I always have handy. These little printing guides give you information about how things will be professionally printed. But this looks like a grayscale stone, right? But in order to get all the full tonality from that in printing, it's actually best to print it with four colors. And when you zoom in on that little spot of it, that's what you see. So the reason you need the different screen angles for the different inks is so they create what are called Gaussian roses. And these Gaussian roses, you can see, are very carefully set to overlap it in different proportions <laughs> so that the colors mix to give you the widest possible range. So blacks come in at 45, blacks are always printed on top and at full opacity. Sometimes magentas are printed under the black, sometimes cyan is printed under the black. So cyan and magenta can swap depending on if you want it cooler or warmer. Yellow is almost always printed first. And yellow is the least flattering angle because that's at a zero angle. It can be considered zero or 90 degrees. It's the same thing. It's like horizontals and verticals, right? So why do I tell you that? Always remember that yellow is at zero or 90 and that black is right in between it at 45 because black is the one you want to look the best. It's printed last. It shows the most contrast. Yellow being the lightest color you'll see that angle the least, so it's the least flattering angle. And between that, you fit cyan and magenta. So this is typically how it's done. Uh, magenta is done at 75 degrees, and cyan is done at 15 degrees, which can also be expressed as 105 degrees. You'll see it differently in different places. So basically, this is the rule to remember. You want the black to shine at 45 degrees, so you set everything 30 degrees from that. You don't want anything within 30 degrees of the black. So 30 degrees on one end, you have cyan. 30 degrees on the other end, you have magenta. And then, because we only have 90 degrees to work with, you fit in with another 15 degrees with the yellow. So yellow is always kind of the odd man out. So those all layer up. So here you have yellow at zero, cyan at 15, black at 45, magenta at 75. And this is a good way to think about it. And you can get all these different kind of vintage processing effects, creating these Gaussian roses. Here you see a Gaussian rose background with no yellow in it, right? Because all colors are a mixture of these four inks. So going back to our digital coloring, this finishing technique is